This meeting is being recorded. So very good afternoon to all. I think now quite a lot of participants have joined. Still, I feel 10 participants are missing at least. I'm requesting all the state coordinators to make them join within a minute. And now we have uh, the expert of this session with us. Uh, we have with us uh, head, uh, head of our department of ICT in CIT, uh, Dr. Bharti. Uh, she will be taking us through assistive technologies and if overall picture of CW, uh, how to uh, uh, work with uh, CWS, and if I'm saying it rightly. Ma'am, I invite you for this session. Uh, welcome, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Monica. And I believe rest of the participants will also join soon. Yes. And in this session, I'll attempt a new thing. New for me may not be new for the rest of the participants. I'll try showing a demo from the website itself of our ISL resources. Right. 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 And um, let me switch off my video and let me go into the presentation mode. And uh, since you have already welcomed everyone, so I'll also join hands in welcoming everyone. Now I see around 124 participants and all are visible on my screen with their cameras on, almost everyone. So thank you friends for keeping your cameras on. And I am now start sharing my and meanwhile, my screen gets shared. Tell me one thing. What do you understand by assistive technology? You can write. No need to unmute yourself. You can write. Write on the chat box. So do I have some answers? Uh, not yet, ma'am. Hmm. So no answers? Fine. So how, are I, how am I going to go ahead with the session? I have one option to run through the PPT. There is one answer. Uh, there yeah. is one answer. Technology which helps us with our day-to-day -day teaching. Fine. Perfectly okay. The technology which helps us with our day-to-day -day teaching. Monica, I'll invite you when I'm not able to see the okay. chat. Okay. So technology which facilitates everyone perfectly okay. So assistive technology, basically you are saying the mobile, the laptop, which are helping us to attend this virtual training, they are also part of assistive technology. Despite disability, I'm happy to see this answer. Technology assistance transacting the lessons. It is useful for special needs children, support us in our day to day work, and which helps the children with disability, helping CWS. Now, here two things. Um, we thank you so much for your responses. Now, what I like to point out in the beginning of the session is when I'm talking about assistive technology, I would like to connect it to national education policy. Now, we all are familiar with NEP, National Education Policy 2020, National Education Policy 2020 identifies five identities of socio-economically disadvantaged group. So, what are these five identities? These five identities are basically children belonging to difficult geographic regions like hilly terrain, like human affected areas, like um, the where the insurgencies are there, natural interactions are there, influences there, or maybe um, geologically disaster prone areas, all these things. So this is first identity, difficult geographic terrain. Second is, okay, someone is saying speak loudly, so let me try speaking a little louder. Second is cultural identity. 
we all know we all belong to different cultures all the participants from different states we have different cultures rituals and different perspective socio cultural perspective so this is the second identity ma'am uh, sorry Jeet. to bother you ma'am uh, i can see only the first slide of the title slide haan, of haan, the presentation haan. only the first slide is there i'll be rushing through the slide okay so i, I enjoy no yeah. no no i enjoy basically communicating with the participants so i'll not give the theoretical perspective because this slide is from cwsa and e content guidelines which is available on ncert and as well as cit's okay. website right as well as moe's website so theory they can gather from reading the guideline so as i was mentioning first identity difficult geographical terrain second identity socio cultural third is children coming from difficult economical backgrounds okay this may include street children this may include children orphaned as well and third or fourth is children belonging to minorities now when i'm saying minorities it could be any kind of minorities recognized by our um, legal perspective by our constitution and then the fifth identity is children with disability and all of you might be aware that in 2016 indian parliament has passed a um, right to persons with disabilities act which recognizes 21 different conditions of disabilities so if i ask you to count on your fingers what are the different conditions of disabilities i'm sure without taking help from google or from the documents you may not be able to give me more than 10 conditions of disabilities that matches with the conditions given in rpwd act 2016 you can try this exercise later on as well fine so if we are talking about assistive technologies we have to cater to the needs of all these five identities which are grouped together as socio economic disadvantaged groups in nep 2020 now let me move to my slides let's rush through the slides quickly <clears throat> we all know we are all aware about pm e vidya which envisions that all efforts related to digital online on air education should be unified there should be a coherence between all efforts and pm e vidya also envisages there should be development of special special e content for students with all kind of disabilities though i have highlighted here only visual and hearing impairment it also envisages that we will be using radio community radio and post podcast effectively and extensively through under the pm e vidya initiatives and the textbooks needs to be energized or qr coded about nep vision i have already shared diksha and swam many of you might be familiar with if not you will know about them in due course of time then what are the digital education initiatives this also i'm sure rest of the speakers might be touching upon but i just want to give you the names it's diksha which started in 2017 swam senior secondary for senior secondary and teachers senior secondary school students and teachers and we also have virtual labs national digital library initiatives and noer national repository of open educational resources we also have e pathshala we have 34 dth channels we have nishta we have o labs and we also have mukt vidya vahini run by nios and we also have shiksha vahini which gives audio content and is run by cbsc pragyata guidelines and other guidelines for development of e content all these guidelines are available on our website now when i'm saying accessible e content because the focus of this session would be on accessible e content for cws so what is accessible e content please focus on the text in red ink accessible e content means person with disability 
or a person belonging to different socio economic disadvantaged groups can acquire same information engage in the same interaction and enjoy the same services at par with a person who doesn't belong to scdgs so what does it mean you may say that we are able to understand this in the context of persons with disabilities fine so what about the persons who are coming from difficult hilly terrain accessibility for a person um i won't be able to show it in the presentation mode there is some technical glitch with my system which is inbuilt and i am not able to remove it so you have to bear with me on this so a person coming from hilly areas or difficult terrains for them accessibility is a major concern in the form of internet connectivity like i can see a group of people sitting together and they are accessing this lecture through one device only so persons coming the same situation might be there for persons who may not have access to individual and dedicated digital devices and this may also be a concern for persons who suppose i start right now speaking in hindi main pura ka pura lecture hindi mein deti hu to kya hoga many of the state participants may not be able to understand because of the language barrier so how ict is able to help me out in that case that also is a concern of accessibility so accessibility concerns doesn't limited to are not limited to only cws and that to only for children with disability we have to take into account concerns arising from different conditions due to different backgrounds to which from which the students are coming the second point is we may say that our home page or our app provides instruction in visual format but what about person who are not able to see so we'll have to change our modality so accessible e content also means giving access making the content fully access so that a person belonging to scdgs who may or may not have any disability may be able to fully equally and independently able to access the information here i would like to give an example at the moment we are in that phase where in our children are filling application forms for higher education or might be starting a new course fine and looking at the pandemic situation which has taught us that things can be done on in online mode be it college admissions be it school education admissions how many of us are able to independently apply online without any help many a times we as adult also not able to apply or not able to fill the form not able to give desired information in the required format is it accessible though we may not have any special needs arising out of any condition so accessibility has to take care the ease of end user as well this is also a major concern for accessibility and third thing is comparable is this i have already started i have already mentioned in the beginning so lekin what is e content e content could be any thank you so much for keeping your microphones muted so when i am talking about accessibility i can extend it to web accessibility i can extend it to digital world accessibility and i can also make extend it to material accessibility friends if you are not interested in whatever i am saying you can please tell me but keep your microphone muted 
Thank you. So what are the accessible standards? For accessible content, we have standards which are given by various organizations. Say, for example, WC, we have WCAG guidelines. We have uh, guidelines for EPUB as well. We have guidelines for persons with disabilities. And when I'm talking about persons with disabilities, the DAISY format is the most usable and most popular format across globe. And we also have guidelines given by Indian government, which is called GIGW. So it is, it talks about the GIGW guidelines for websites, talks about three levels that the guide, that the website's design should be usable, they should be user-centric, and they should be universally accessible. And the further extension of GIGW guidelines has three categories, which is advisory, mandatory, and voluntary. Say, for example, the guidelines advises some points to maintain usability of websites. Few things are mandatory and few things are voluntary. Three level, three kind of actions are prescribed under GIGW. So you can find the detail about GIGW guidelines from ministry website. And now the slide that is available in front of you talks about IDD, ASD, MD, blood disorder, and mental illness. Let's keep our focus on this slide for a moment. Um, yes. Can anyone write in the chat box what could be IDD? From which my slide is starting. What is IDD? Or maybe ASD? So one by one, you are switching off your cameras. Good. <clears throat> OK. No answer means either we are getting bored or we don't know. So I'm assuming. OK, good. Now the answers are flowing. IDD is intellectual and developmental disabilities, intellectual development disabilities. OK. OK. Fine. Absolutely true. IDD definitely relates to intellectual development disabilities. You know, earlier we used to call children mentally retarded. Mental retardation was the popular term. But over the years, the term has taken a derogatory connotations. So we have started using IDD, which encompasses not only mental retardation, but other conditions associated with the intellectual development during the foundational year. And thank you so much for expanding ASD as well, autism spectrum disorder. Now, IDD is one condition which is easily visible. But what about autism? Autism spectrum disorder, what about it? Which condition is this? And why I have added, why the, not me, why the experts have added spectrum here to this condition? Okay. Neurological. Okay. Um, Guljar G is saying it is hard to understand what others are thinking or feeling. Uh, not absolutely true, but you are on the right track. Absolutely true, sir. The slides in the presentation should not be voluminous and content loaded. I appreciate that you are pointing it out. So, uh, thank you.
thank you i'll keep it in mind that is why i just wanted to rush the content because theory you can get from the guidelines as well and autism is also known as spectrum disorder because there is a wide variation in the type and severity of symptoms people experience it occurs in all perfectly okay Okay, so, so let me simplify it. Let me devote two minutes on this issue. You know why it is a spectrum? It is the spectrum because two children with autism may not show the same behavior. One child may excel in mathematics. One child may have excellent memory. Another may be focusing on minute details. which may or may not be relevant for the topic at hand and i'll not agree that asd impacts nervous system yes but it definitely affect overall cognition emotional social and basically the interaction with people and peers around moreover autism basically indicates the person is living within the world of his or her own so much so the child is not able to express his or her needs even with their parents and siblings and the telltale sign is the child is not able to make eye contact the child is not able to follow instructions unless the child is named in the class if you'll say oh, everybody open your cameras the child will not assume that the instruction is for him or her but why i need to detail all these instructions with you as a group who are gathered here to understand what development of e content so why i need to share uh, information related to the disabilities tell me purposely i have stopped sharing the screen because rest of the screen also are content overloaded and they are devoted to group of disabilities also tell me why to learn about assistive technology is so important for this group of people who are attending this training we all are teacher educators right so if we are teacher educators we have to train the teachers at pre service as well as in service level so when we are teaching or interacting with future teachers we have to make them future ready and basically after yes after nep 2020 our classrooms are going to be more flooded with children with special needs because the emphasis of nep is too much on creating inclusive classrooms inclusive cultures and inclusive practices so we need to focus on addressing the special needs with the help of ict okay so now let me give you an example okay but well, it's very easy to say for inclusive teaching but how do i make my teaching learning inclusive suppose in our group there is a person to treat all children in the same way it helps large print displays alternative color on the computer screen and voice output can help in computerization in compensating reading problems okay so tell me what are inclusive classrooms and what is inclusive pedagogy practice it's very easy to say let's make our content inclusive how do i include a child who is not able to hear yes easily we can uh, we can very easily say uh, adopt multiple approaches 
according to the PW Act 1995. Sir, who is writing this according to the PW Act 1995? We recognized only seven disabilities in PWD Act 1995, but at the moment in 2016 RPWD Act, we are recognizing 21 disability conditions. So it's three times. Okay, so now all of you are talking about voice outputs, all of you are talking about large print displays. Is this all that we can think about assistive technology? Yes, we can do personalized teaching. Hearing impaired children can learn through visuals and sign language. So is it okay if I bring in an interpreter who can interpret whatever I am saying right now in sign language? Will that be all that a person with hearing impairment requires or something else as well? And can I engage any interpreter? Or there are cautions that need to be followed. Somebody is saying uh, we can't audible voice. Voice not audible. But here I am seeing my voice is. Ma'am, it yes, is properly yes, audible. audible. It is audible. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is audible. I know, I know, I know. Some of the participants, because they don't, either they don't have answers or they are feeling bored. <laughs> so that happens every time. That's okay. No issues. So tell me. Is it okay if I just need to introduce only an interpreter? What are the precautions that I need to take? Um, can I talk? Yeah, sure. Tell me. Just be brief. Be very brief. Yes. Yeah, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, only uh, sign language is not enough uh, because uh, there there may be a blind child in my class. So uh, he cannot see the sign languages also. So okay. I have to see all other options also. So that was the, my answer. Perfect. So yes, very true. In a class, I can have a child who is not able to see and I also have a child who is not able to hear. So what do I do? I have my textbook in print format, okay? But the child might be in class two. The child may not be able to, the child may not be familiar with the science of vocabulary words. So what do I do? I have to teach him science for vocabulary words, just like you teach vocabulary words to a child who's not familiar with the words given in the text or chapter. So for that, you have to select interpreters very carefully. Or when you are making e-content, so what you can do is you have to bring in audio, you have to have the visual, and you also have to have the sign language. Is it possible? What happens in the classroom? We have Braille textbooks as well. Okay. Now, uh, if I have a Braille textbook in my classroom, a child is using Braille. What happens to the peer who is sitting around her, maybe sharing the same bench or maybe uh, sitting at the back or at the front? What is the impact the Braille books have on other children? No, by using Braille books at one level, I am encouraging. I'm encouraging children's participation by giving them resources based on equity. But at the same time, if I am blind and I'm using Braille book, the child sitting sharing my desk will see that my book has dots. My book doesn't have any picture. My book is just on white thick paper. It is more in size. Won't I be creating a feeling of alienation? If yes, Mohammed Kasim ji, you want to say something? Ji, 
share your thought no okay so we have no, to yeah. okay we, we you are listening to other only we are checking whether uh, the conditions are good or not only what us. conditions what conditions sir we are very uh, remote area we are in, okay we don't have then now we are trying to how to get what this is okay 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 so you also have a special need getting it yes okay so let me give you an exercise in 5 minutes online exercise we all will participating in but before that if i <clears throat> i'm using braille textbooks braille textbooks if you have seen they have much larger size than our regular textbooks and if a regular textbook has 30 pages the braille textbook will have more than 80 pages for the same content and if as a teacher i am saying to all children open page number 5 and start reading from passage 2 in the braille textbook by the time you are finished reading that passage or discussing that passage with the entire class the child using braille textbook might be able to find which chapter which passage you are talking about because as a teacher you are also not aware in the braille book where that passage would be so for that you need to take help of the special educator or the resource teacher or as a teacher i may think of preparing braille textbooks with some amount of print maybe the name of the lesson maybe the beginning of the passages and the text relating so that relating braille textbook to print textbooks becomes easier this is one aspect second aspect is if i am giving a video in sign language how the child who is able to hear relate to that video or how am i going to relate to the video in sign language if i do not know the sign language what do i do pardon we have yes you put to the voice also yeah put the voice also very true yeah very true so that you can you can hear and yes we can definitely do that and i am i just wanted to show um i just wanted to show you diksha you all are familiar this screen sharing not in there ಹೇಳಿ <laughs> ಇಷ್ಟೇನೋಡೇ
i am sorry my mic got muted and the diksha that i was trying to show was not working and it's not even getting reset so let me stick to my original exercise that i was planning to share with you okay share screen okay now what is visible on your screen it's a picture it's a page from class 1 textbook mathematics developed by ncert i am teaching now in an online mode fine and i have a blind child also in my class tell me how do i make this exercise accessible to the child how can i do this anyone you can show two of by sensing uh, by by showing the things yes. to the hand by okay. sensing excuse me ma'am yes yes sir you can provide two objects one is smaller another one is larger absolutely true so what that else? they can differentiate one is small one another one is large one bilkul definitely is, sir ma'am yes uh, uh, when you are teaching online and you are showing this image and uh, there is a, a child who cannot see you can hmm. put the voice of the animals so that bachcha wo sun sun sakta hai aur उसको पहचान सकता है अच्छा ये बड़ा होगा ये छोटा होगा क्योंकि वो चूब मतलब उसको सेंस भी होना चाहिए कि वो टच करके उसको देखा है या ऑफ कोर्स एंड वन मोर नाउ आई हैव अ क्वेरी हियर टू द लेडी हु इज सेइंग कि वी कैन ऐड वॉइसेस डेफिनेटली वी कैन ऐड वॉइसेस आई एम गिविंग यू द वॉइस ऑफ अ कुकू द बर्ड एंड आई एम आल्सो गिविंग यू द वॉइस ऑफ अ puppy by listening to the voices will you able to tell me which animal is bigger think about it okay and another thing yes very easily i can say that hold a potato and hold a pea in your hands to give them the concept of bigger and smaller but my yes. principles of inclusive pedagogy practices also tells me clubbed with universal design for learning the same content in multiple formats needs to be shared with all students it's not that as a dessert i am giving ice cream to nilaiya ji and i am giving halwa to rajkumar ji will that be inclusion no that will not be the inclusion will be if i am giving ice cream based dessert to all as per their need maybe some like it with less sugar some like it with nuts maybe some like it on sticks but they all enjoying ice cream are we ready to give our classrooms this kind of specific interventions somebody is sharing the link training class conducted by scrt kerala for visually impaired ranjit kripsan ji ranjit ji uh, i can't see you on my screen ranjit ji i need your intervention how do i make this particular page 
accessible to a child who is not able to see when i am teaching in online mode so, madam, yes ranjit ji uh, uh, this class was conducted by scrt on the uh, for uh, visually impaired uh, teachers for the training purpose perfectly okay sir and perfectly i have okay. another link another i have another link for uh, the training classes conducted for hearing impaired also where uh, i will send uh, copy perfectly okay but sir please help us out in making this page accessible for all let's uh, assume in this gathering i am not able to see whereas the rest of the people are able to give you answer to this to, to the four uh, questions given in this page yes okay madam uh, uh, what are you uh, uh so i want to share my screen sure <laughs> okay okay no, no, I, I but why you want to share sir why you want to share your screen you just have to answer this okay how do i make let okay let me further simplify the question there are four questions on your screen can you please give me Uh, the solution for the first question, which shows a hippopotamus and a puppy. Okay. Okay. Uh, How for, do uh, I make it accessible? For visually impaired students, for visually impaired yeah. students, oh, they, uh, they, can, they are they can learning. See. They are learning online. Are learning. Like we they are, are conducting on, this. Meeting. They are. Uh, they are learning online. Uh, yes. But we have. But we have to uh, narrate the peculiarities, uh, the characteristics of the uh, particular animal. They are begin okay. size and uh, uh, begin size and uh, the shape and size also. Then, then on their language, on their Braille language, uh, we can narrate a short note. Okay. On their Braille language, we can narrate a short note and uh, send the, send off the students to the read. Hmm. and okay. uh, we, we can we can also uh, make the sound produced by that particular animal so so these uh, these students can uh, identify from the gather perfect perfect thank you so much sir a little correction here just a little correction here okay. and before i share the corrections anybody else would like to answer nobody okay so taking cue from ranjit ji's answer and the ideas that i'm getting on chat yes we can ask the children to touch the animal but tell me one thing how many of us have actually touched a hippo may not be right no yeah. this is not possible not possible agree agree that uh, some some like sometimes it is possible yeah uh, from a from a person a well trained animal yes yes we can yes. Uh, we can arrange it. of course we can and you know um just let me give you some ideas so that before monica says my time is up we are able to wrap it up and i am able to take your questions as well so what i can do is during online classes let me go back to my screen the very first thing that i have to keep in mind while converting audio or creating this page in audio format first of all i'll have to say page 3 textbook mathematics titled mathematics this page has how many questions four questions each question has two pictures by just simple description the child will be able to visualize next thing in question number 1 you have to tell which one is bigger now this question has picture of two animals one animal is called hippopotamus this animal speaks like this we can add a audio note and then we can also say its weight is many times than your own weight and its size also is bigger than your 
height the second animal is puppy the puppy's height is shorter than your height so now tell me which one is bigger and which one is smaller so if i am doing it like this i am not giving the answer but still i am able to convey the question similarly for question number 2 in question number 2 you have to tick the smaller and the picture shows two leaves one leaf you are able to hold in your hand and other leaf you won't be able to hold completely in your hand so which one is smaller similarly for question number 3 you have to tell me which one is smaller two animals picture is given one is squirrel squirrel speaks like this and one is cow the cow speaks like this squirrel can be held in palm but cow may not be will it be a cue to seek answers from children yes we can give models life scale models that's true but here let me um, share with you another anecdote and then i'll stop talking and we'll see how much time we have for inviting questions a teacher very enthusiastic teacher like me while conducting offline classes has taken model of a rat as well as a lion when both the models were given to the children the children got the notion the vi children blind children got the notion that size of rat is always almost equal to size of the lion why because the size given to the size of models were almost comparable so while dealing with touchables while dealing with manipulatives while giving them something tactile during offline mode please take care we are not making these kind of mistakes so thank you everyone the diksha videos which i am not able to show you at the moment i'll request monica ki uh, monica will you be able to show them some ISL textbook based videos produced by CIT and CERT which are based I will, on I will share the link on the group so that they can uh, see it as well comfortable Good to day. them and they'll be able to uh, also devote more time to it perfect because we have already uploaded the content of class 1 to 5 on diksha portal okay so this can be So now, any questions? I have time. I believe Monica for taking two questions. Thank you. So, any questions, anyone? Madam. Yes, sir. Here uh, there is no uh, utilization of any ICT because. the polished uh, audio or images can be shown or tell the student that this is this, this is this it is actually take place the uh, uh, anywhere in the uh, nation in the classroom uh, monica i am not very clear with what sir is trying to tell me you have to come in between yes uh, satish sir can you please write in the chat box your audio is breaking actually Uh, is it helpful is it okay so you you please write uh excuse me ma'am yes Ma i have a doubt uh, please by inclusion does it mean hmm. that all the students of all kinds of disabilities should be included in the same class with others With the same syllabus, same pedagogical aspects, same syllabus. I mean, the same uh, evaluation process. Is it possible in a class having fifty to sixty students? Yes. Saying a very 
forceful yes from my own experience of teaching geometry to 70 girls in one class that to geometry and conducting evaluation as well first thing sir all children of all kind of disability may not be present in your one class in your one class you will have a child with more than one or two may not have child having more than two to three disabilities and when i'm saying not having more than two to three disabilities the most difficult disability condition due to its nature for inclusion from the perspective of inclusion is children belonging to idd intellectual disability intellectually development disabilities yes so this is it so first in your class all kind of disability may not be present second the disabilities that you are able <coughs> to face or experience in your classrooms may be easier one to accommodate. Say, for example, through voice notes. Say, for example, modifying the worksheets. They are very easy. The only thing is we have to think beyond our regular notions. And now Satish is saying not using any ICT, but only polished audio and images. Is there any way to use ICT as such? Yes, there are many ways to use ICT. With the help of ICT, you can make interactives, H5P content. You can make a um, lot many games and quizzes. You can show the, say, for example, on my slide on which somebody pointed out it is content loaded. I can add a window highlighting the content that I wanted to highlight with the help of immersive technologies. That is also possible. And when I'm saying, when you are saying that only polished audio, try preparing an audio. Just for the page that I showed you, you have to write a script describing the page layout. Then you'll have to think of the ways how to make the question readable without giving answer. It's not easy task. Okay, and then comes the recording, at which pace the content is to be recorded, which voice is to be used. Yes, there are guidelines available for SLD. Try to, Monica will give you the link for e-content guidelines for CWS. Uh, Ma'am, yes, we will yes. be sharing and also we are having a session on that, so that will be taken care of. Okay, so who is taking that session, e-content guidelines? Uh, Ma'am, it is basically e-content evaluation session in that we uh, share uh, e-content guidelines and e-content evaluation, all the details regarding yes. to that. Okay, but make sure uh, it's a different dedicated guideline. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I know. You are aware of those guidelines. Yes, 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 ma'am. Yes. Okay. Fine. Okay. So, any other query? Any other query? If not, over to you, Monica. I hope I am well within my time. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, uh, giving awareness on all the uh, quite a lot of areas in CWSN and how we can uh, take it up in the classroom. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, wonderful session. Thank you to all the participants also for being so active and posting all the queries in the chat box which makes us after the post in the post lunch session active so that when you are active we also become more active thank you so much uh, now we will move on to the next uh, session which is on oer oer and licenses so before that i yes ma'am monica before you go on let me thank all the participants for not sleeping sure. in my class thank you thank you everyone and um, I'm sorry if I sounded rude and rough at some point. 
because you know it's one of the thing one of the area where i am not speaking from the knowledge point i'm speaking from the point of heart okay thank you everyone thank you thank you ma'am uh, so thank before you, uh, before moving on to the next part i am just giving an announcement that now we will be sharing a google form link for your attendance for this session so kindly be alert and mark the attendance don't post this link in the whatsapp group everyone who is present here in the session is only allowed to mark the attendance so it will be just posted by the uh, the technical team in the chat box so be careful about it and mark the attendance during the session itself because it will be closed within an hour so now moving on to oer open educational resources and licenses uh, session uh, i think uh, as per the just looking at the uh, the expertise uh, all of you have on e content creation or a few participants which have been uh, participating in the previous programs i know many of you are very much aware about what an oer is or what these licenses are which we are going to talk about but still many of you are not aware and we will be going through uh, we will be understanding what is uh, all this and uh, we'll be going through this presentation one by one i'll be with you only for this session so i'll now start my screen share so that uh, we can discuss over it we will have just Uh, i'll just try to keep it for 25 minutes and for 5 minutes we will have a question answer round and then we will go for the uh, next uh, session i hope you can see the screen so uh, can you see the screen Yes. Okay. Great. That's it. Uh, Ma'am, Google Form link will just be posted within a few minutes, within a minute or two. So be careful about that. Don't worry. We will announce it once again um, after my session also, so that you don't miss. It is here. The link is here now. Everybody can carefully mark their attendance. I'm starting with the session. So the session. We before getting into understanding what the licenses are. first we need we are a word which we are uh, with which we are very much aware is copyright i think everybody is aware of this word copyright yes is everybody aware matlab maybe maybe you can just uh, do this yes. yes so when we know what a copyright is copyright means that there is an intellectual property where we have used maybe we have uh, written some document and then the owner has the legal right over it that is uh, copyright and it is basically that it doesn't allow you to copy say for example when we are maybe creating an e resource and we are using some kind of images which are clicked by somebody else they are his copyright his or her copyright and we cannot use that image without their permission that is copyright even if you as a teacher maybe have created a lesson plan and all the resources which you have put are belongs to you you have created them then you have the copyright you possess the copyright of that particular item now this is basically about any kind of literary work which we are doing or any artistic work so it depends that if a painter has created a painting that also comes under copyright so this basically gives an uh, uh, genre that up to which we can go that which kind of content can be covered in copyright so you can see novels poems plays films musical works you must have heard in the bollywood that this um, song has been copied from a previous song of hollywood or something like these news keeps coming so that is where we can see that in every aspect of creative work which is can be a written work or a music thing or a painting this applies even a sculpture we can apply this so this uh, we uh, when we are creating we should be careful that okay now this is under our copyright if we uh apply for the copyright act now 
how to use copyright uh, copyrighted work do we use that now for example i am a researcher and i am uh, you know using a definition of oer or maybe copyright of given by some organization maybe oer definition by unesco so when i am saying that unesco has defined oer as so then and also i am putting the complete resource of that uh, complete resource of that definition in my references then that is a fair use but that is a limited part i am just using a definition it doesn't mean that i take the complete document give a source and you know printing it on my name adding just two for uh, a little bit to it so then that is not fair use so we are reproducing reusing uh, when it is considered fair is when we are either giving proper right and it is just a chunk of the information or it is used for criticism comment news reporting even teaching sometimes okay in youtube we see many videos you are directly uh, you know playing them in the class and using that is possible because that is uh, that is why they are there but you cannot download them and you know edit it and you reuse it that is not possible so if you are just directly using it then you can use it but again yeah, yeah. you have to have a chunk of it and a proper use of it and how otherwise if you want a full text say for example uh, we have certain tests for intelligence or achievement test different tests are available in the uh, uh, educational uh, this thing which are uh, there to maybe check the personality which kind of personality is or maybe we want to check uh, you know uh, a student uh, for counseling we use educational counseling we use certain test so then how to use those test then we have to buy the license we have to buy those test that is the fair use of uh, copyright or the content which is copyrighted now this was the term which we are actually very much familiar of if you now understand copyright when a film is made then you see pirated copies of the videos available in the market and we buy them in 35 rupees or 40 rupees whereas the original cd or dvd was used to be available for maybe 150 rupees so that is if that video if that cd is captured then it is a offense so having a whatever required uh, you know uh, uh, punishment for that so that is also violation of copyright when we are making the pirated copy of a movie now copyright is a term which we still understand then there is the second term which is called public domain now what is public domain anything which is maybe available in public is public domain we can understand it basically this way now materials or the contents which are not protected by these rights or laws that are in generally public domain or any content which is not owned by anybody or and owned by the public that is also in public domain also there are certain works for which they become public domain when the copyright uh, years expire say for example uh, uh, music or something we have certain period that after that maybe after 25 years of its creation the rights expire and then the music that file will become come in public domain for use so that is uh, basically whatever is available to public to directly use without any copyrighted uh, situations so that is but here also there is one thing which applies that whenever as a teacher we are using any content then we should always give uh, always cite that in the resources so as i said in my research paper i am mentioning that it is from unesco i am also giving complete detail from where i have accessed it so this always helps us to qualify for the plagiarism we won't get into the plagiarism if we are using it with proper citation of the content now we have understood copyright we have understood public domain now the next thing which is there is licenses what are licenses licenses basically are uh, the permissions which are given by the copyright holder 
for their content. Now, what is this permission? So basically, when we have a copyright over any content, we are giving certain permissions for you that you can use that content so that if it has been created, it can reach to maximum people. So here the copyright is, we are not getting into any official purpose uh, uh, process of getting copyright, but the creator itself is assigning a license to their work. Only when, then, if he has created the work by himself. There are licenses which are available for purchase also. There are licenses which are available free of cost also. And Creative Commons is the one such license which is most frequently used and most frequently we have heard about. So if you go to even YouTube, you can find Creative Commons. If you go to Google, you can find uh, Creative Commons. You can other websites also, you can search for Creative Commons. So this is the mostly available and easily accessible license for all of us as a teacher. Now to understand, Creative Commons is basically a kind of organization which allows us to, allows a, uh, the owner of the work to apply the licenses and they provide basically four uh, major components in those licenses. What are that? That is the first is by, BY. Now BY means attribution. The one thing which I talked about is always citation, give the citation. So BY means you are actually always citing the owner. Say for example, you have created a very good video, but you wanted some image which you found and you are giving attribution that okay this is created by this person or i have accessed it from this place that is attribution so in cc licenses we have the first component is attribution which is termed in the license as by the next is nc that means non commercial use nc non commercial the license which is basically prohibiting you to use the product commercially ND, no derivative. That means the license is prohibiting you as a teacher to not make any changes to it. You can use it, but you cannot make changes to it. The third is share alike. Now share alike means I have a license of this. If you are using my image, then whatever product you are creating, you have to use the same license. So these are the four terms and these four terms makes basically six licenses. It gives us six licenses when we join them together. The first is CC BY, which we discussed. BY means we are giving attribution. And what all does it allow? This license allows the reuser who is using it to distribute. That means you make copies, remix. That means make changes, adapt, again changes and build upon the material. Or maybe you can just take a chunk and make a completely new uh, resource out of it. You can do basically everything so long as attribution is given to the creator. So basically you can do anything and everything, but you have to just give attribution to the user. Now on the screen, you can see this is the CC symbol and this is the symbol for by a human figure and written by. This is CC BY. When you are applying, say for example, you want to use this license for your uh, e-content, then you have to use this image. Or you can write CC BY. Right? So here, this only means that we are going to give uh, credit to the person who have created that content which we are using in our content or in our class or whichever place. Say for example, even if I'm making a PPT, I'm going to give a credit. So this PPT was not created by me. This, this PPT has been created by a faculty member in CIT. So his or her name is there in the PPT. I'm not removing it. So I'm giving the complete uh, attribution to that person. The third is second license becomes is CC by we have understood where CC means where CC means uh, creative commons by means attribution. The third word which is added is SA. Now the symbol for SA is this, reshare like symbol. So now this allows us for redistribute, remix, adapt, and build upon. The only thing, so long as attribution is given, 
this license is also allowing you for commercial use but the only thing is you must license the modified material under the same or identical terms why because this license is a beautiful license which tells you that whatever has been created you cannot stop it up to you you have to share it further so sa gives you permission that it will never be stopped at any person say for example somebody taken cc by and or cc by sa then he added nc or nd why are you restricting the license these are the most open licenses the above one cc by and cc by sc so here it means uh, if i am using an image clicked by you i have to always give a license with sa that means share alike you have to share it further so this basically increases the accessibility of the content then the third one is cc by nc now cc by we know cc creative commons by attribution nc that this is a product please do not use it for commercial purposes that is the only difference now whether you share a like or not but give the attribution and do not use it for the commercial purposes these two conditions have been applied in this license now the third fourth one here cc by nc by sa which means i am giving credit to the author i am not using it for commercial purposes and i am sharing it alike so that other person if making any modification to this can share it alike so that is how we are giving a lot of options that a person can use it reuse it and reshare it now the next license is cc by nd nd was no derivative which means you cannot make changes to the work you cannot adapt it as per your need say for example i have created a resource in english you cannot translate it or adapt it in tamil telugu or any other language but in other previous licenses you can do that so that is the difference of this license here i am using somebody's product i am giving the attribution but i am not allowed to make changes in that content now if you see this is the most restricted license which i am going to discuss now which is cc by nc by nd cc by we know nc means non commercial nd means no derivative so here you have to give the attribution you cannot make changes to it and you cannot use the product for the commercial purposes right so this is the most restricted license and cc by was the most free license now as a teacher when you are creating e contents you can choose the license as per your need if you go through the e content licenses which are given in cit were basically cc by sa that you can use it you can reuse it but you have to share it alike if you are going to make any changes to it not to the textbook i am not talking about the ncert textbook no you cannot make changes to them only the e contents i am talking about so now, now the next thing is we have discussed is public domain and in cc also there is a license which is called cc0 which is a again which shows it as a public domain now here zero means that you don't have to even give the attribution the license says that it is a public tool and cc0 is allowing you to re reuse uh, reuse distribute remix adapt and build upon in any medium any format with no conditions but here since we don't have to give attribution but as an educationist i would like to say i would like to insist you that always give attribution even though when you give attribution you will not lose anything out of it so always always make it a habit if you are using any kind of content from online resources you are using always give attribution right so these are the licenses which we have discussed and these are the rights which are applicable to each license basically whatever we have discussed is here given in an infographic form this is the information this is the graphic we are going to create infographics also in the coming sessions right now what are the creative common platforms where we can get the resources 
which are OER. So these are available at different places. You can simply go to Google also. You can go to YouTube also to access these resources, or you can go to all these places, Flickr for images, YouTube, as I mentioned, Wikimedia Commons, Vimeo, everything. You can visit all these platforms and access OER, basically the contents which are released under Creative Commons. Now, can you apply a CC license? How to apply a CC license? That is also an important thing. We will that we will see now uh, how to apply a CC license. So I am I am going on to a website. Can you see a blank page on my screen? Yes. Yes. Yes, madam. Yes, yes. So I am right now in yes, front of you. I am typing. Okay, creating. I am just simply typing here. Creating CC license. Uh, just give me a second. So I am uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Now I'm going, uh, I'm just uh, stopping the screen share once and again sharing it. Host control change, wiring change, perfect speed, reaction and host control. Now here I am uh, in my Chrome, simply I am going to type create CC license. I am writing it this way so that you can also, as a user, try it. Create CC license. So here, I will come here. You can see creativecommons.org is a website which is telling me to choose a license. I will go here. This is why I am demonstrating so that when you have to give a license to your work, you can do that. Now, this is a Creative Commons page which has opened. You can learn more about the Creative Commons itself from here. But now you can see. Say, for example, this is these are the license features which you have to give. Now, I have maybe clicked an image. It is asking allow adaptations of your work to be shared. Adaptations means I am allowing them to make changes to the image. So if I say yes or I want to say no, the license here will change. Now you see, I say no. You can see the license has changed, right? ND has come. If I say yes, the license has changed. If I say yes, as long as others share alike, the license has changed. Okay, these are two questions which we have to answer. This is the second, based on which the license will appear for us. Allow commercial use of work. I say yes or I say no. If I say no, it will add one more thing. So this is the most, uh, I will say, CC by, as I demonstrated, NC and SC. So it says, this is a Creative Commons license. Attribution is required by NC, you cannot use it for commercial purposes. SA, whatever has been created, you can make changes, but you have to share it alike. You cannot keep it to yourself. That is the license which is available, right? You can create the licenses this way for any of your e-content which you are creating. Now I will go back to my presentation. This, we have learned how to apply a CC license. This way we can create a CC license for our resource, uh, resources. Now, what is an OER? Jumping from CC to OER. OER is basically open educational resources. What CC does, CC makes our resources open. Open for reuse, 
open for reshare open for reedit open for using for commercial purposes whatever reasons we have discussed in cc licenses that make a resource open so for example a software when it becomes open is there is a difference between a free software and an open software free is we just don't have to pay anything open is the source code the back end of the source uh, software is available to us to edit the source code and make changes to the program itself that is the word open means that it is allowing us to make changes in the resources or in the software that is called oer these are different oers where uh, portals where we can access oers the the content which is on diksha is also under oer so basically it tells us about use reuse and share it further for using right that is it for understanding this creative commons and oer and licenses if you have any question we can take that for now 5 minutes and then we can go for the next uh, thing if you have any question you can post in the chat box also the attendance has been posted you can please mark the attendance there was a question regarding attendance for the first session so that we, that has happened through the registration form itself that was also uh, your filling up the registration form was also a mark of your attendance only so now you can mark the attendance for your this session and if you have any questions please put it in the chat box or you can raise the hand don't directly unmute please raise the hand we will ask you to unmute and then we will talk share alike explain once again so share alike basically means rajkumar sir when we are for example created a video i have given it a license cc by sa sa means share alike so here if another teacher say for example now i have created a video in english you as a uh, you are from pondicherry so you want to maybe translate the audio in tamil so you are allowed to do that but only thing you have to keep in mind is when you have translated in tamil you cannot make it a copyrighted thing or you cannot keep it to yourself you have to share that resource alike with the alike resource of sharing basically you have to copy the license which i have given to your resource so that it reaches to the most of the people how can we get a license to youtube or our google sheets sir in youtube when we are uploading anything or when we are even accessing any um, material on youtube we can check the source for that i will just show you that uh, uh, how to do that i am just sharing my screen so that i can show you so now here i am opening the youtube now in youtube for example i am searching for um, oer no i just take any any other topic um, assistive hello technologies this is the topic i am searching for on videos right so these are a lot of videos which are appearing below now before using them what i have to do is here you can see after my search option there is a button filters i will simply click on this filters now you can see here in features there are a lot of options open in features there is a option creative commons you can click on this option and all the videos which are available in creative commons will be visible to you but still for example i have opened this video or you have chosen already a video you can go to the show more button you can see creative common attribution license is given here right so this is the way we can check the licenses in youtube and how this has appeared when you are uploading any video on youtube you can tick mark that you are releasing it under creative commons now while searching on google now for example on google i am searching uh, assistive technologies right so here lot of material is coming what i can do either i can go to tools here 
no not here i i'll go to maybe images first in images when i go this is a tools option here click on the tools a new row will appear size color type time whichever image you want and uses rights you i am right now looking for all you can choose for creative common license or commercial and other license there are only two options in google which allows for commercial use or creative common license so you can choose creative common license and you will see that the options have changed which were not under creative commons are now removed from here this is the way you can check for the creative commons resources while accessing on the online uh, port portals wherever you go you can go to more or details and you can check the licenses any other question i hope i could make you understand or it was just too heavy to understand no it is very simple so nice thank you sir so now please mark your attendance we will now break for 10 minutes and i request you all to please come back within the 10 minutes don't take too much time so that we can start the next session on time i hope you have all marked the attendance Uh, madam not, I, i have one query you have told about how to take the creative common contents from youtube as well as the images how to uh, search the content text material how to search the content content material pdf material creative commons you have told okay. about okay 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 right i'll just uh, show you again so Man, as i, I went on Hello. As I went on Google again, I am searching for something. Say, for example, assistive technologies. All I have searched for, right? So then there is a. Uh, I can see an advanced search button here. I can look for the advanced search button. I think that is in uh, uh, this thing. Uh, what you call? Just a second. I'll search for it. Okay, call images, ma'am. First, images, and then images. This is the one. You go to the images. You go to the images first. When you go to the yeah, images, this is the button. You go to the tool, usage rights, and you can select Creative Commons. Okay. Okay, ma'am. No, no, not for images. I would like to take the print material, PDF material. How to? Right, right. I'm telling you, ma'am. For that, for that, as I shown, there are various places where OER content is available. I shown you a few listed websites on my slide. I'll just uh, show you again that so that you can use that. Just give me. Let me move this. Okay, that's okay. That I know. But from how to search from Google like that material? If we, if we, if we are getting a PDF material, but how do mm -hmm. we, we should know that it is? Ma'am, in uh, yes, ma'am, there is this advanced search option. That is what I was telling you. You said for images first, so I moved on to the images. I'm simply typing the Google first. it will be the uh, under the creative commons okay ma'am okay okay so basically say for example as a researcher or sometime when we are writing a paper when you are getting into the google scholar also then this button directly appears on the screen 
otherwise you can just indirectly search or rather i you should go to for this you should go to the directly to the uh, different websites which are available for pdfs only because in google directly searching sometimes is misleading also whenever you are searching through google please go to that resource and also recheck as i told you in the uh, youtube part that when i am going to go to more details so that we can confirm the license that is also uh, one way of uh, uh, doing the search uh, there is uh, an observation by someone uh, creative commons very poor quality images can be obtained is there any way to get good quality image sir uh, flickr and pixabay are the two portals where more cc images are available which are of good quality and printing quality so you can try that depends for your subject it is available or not but it is definitely better images are available on pixabay or flickr you can try that i will share one link in the google group through which you can directly lead to many websites and many portals where different kind of resources are available in oer as oer so maybe sounds music you will get links for all of them so i'll share that link with you uh, maybe today evening so that when you are accessing you want a music file you can access it from the online uh, places yes sir that is of course there but we have to this culture has started of open educational resources we have to create then only it will be visible it has started to be visible but it is not always visible whatever we are looking for so then we have to create also yes rajkumar sir you want to say something i yes no good afternoon Good. I have one. Uh, you are going yes, for some image in the Google. Uh, that peculiar image is not available in the Google. Uh, if suppose I have the image, how can I upload in the Google? Sir, your voice is. Uh, hello, ma'am. Is it audible now? Yes, better, sir. Now, please ask. Okay, ma'am. Uh, if you are going to search for some image in the Google, it, uh, some type of images are not available. suppose an elephant drinking water in a tap that image is not available in the google if that if suppose i have the image i want to upload it in the google so that other person if they want the image they can download it how can i upload that sir uh, for your question uh, don't directly upload to google go to pixabay or flickr there you there is the possibility to directly upload in a Uh, apply a proper license and uh, images which are there in uh, pixabay or flickr are also some uh, most of the time visible in google also so it will be available as a search engine also but you will be uploaded properly with your name and the certificate also i can upload my image in the pixabay pixabay and flickr gives you the opportunity to upload you can upload it there i will I, i will always ask you to upload on the oer platforms we have lot of images platform when i'll share the link you can access and then you can upload it on those platforms so that it is available in the open source thank you is there any constraint from the software part that are being used to sir no since you have paid for the software use it so that create whatever we create is available tools also which we can use to create the resources so now i will uh, go ahead and break for 10 minutes please join back at right uh, now it is 43 so please join back at 53 we will start the session at 55 we are already late by 10 minutes so please join back at 53 so that we can start the session on time okay thank okay, you welcome ma'am okay thank you thank you ma'am
Thank you. 